Later, friends. Nibs again. <clears throat> wanted to get out in the garage and do a little bit of plinking around this afternoon. And uh, I wanted to bring you guys a, another video. You saw this in a bring home video the other day. But this is going to be kind of my uh, full, full blown review, hopefully, a good review of this, what seeming to be a very rare <laughs> piece of uh, Daisy history. Um, I've been searching for. I seen some I found a bunch of information on it, but I haven't found a lot of these for sale. Um, and this is the first one that I've ever seen in person and held in my hand or anything like that. But uh, what we have here is, and I'll put a picture of the roll stamp along the top here first. Uh, but we have a Daisy number 107, and this is a Buck Jones special. I'm just going to read what uh, I'm not going to read you the patent number, others pending. Daisy Manufacturing Company, Plymouth, Michigan, USA. So Daisy moved from Plymouth in 1958 to Rogers, Arkansas. So you see a gun that has Plymouth on it, um, you know it was made at least before 1958. This one was made much before that, but we're going to get into that in a couple of minutes. But uh, so this is a Buck Jones special, and uh, there is the side panel it just says Buck Jones on it <clears throat> and this one's pretty cool this has got the uh, sundial in the stock and a working compass in the stock so this is the gun that it kind of inspired the uh, what became the Red Rider in A Christmas Story uh, apparently they didn't do their homework or their man uh, or maybe they couldn't get uh, licensed for the Buck Jones and they could get licensed for the Red Rider. I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but now they have the A Christmas Story, uh, A Christmas Wish, uh, Daisy Red Rider, and I have one of those over there. <clears throat> but uh, that's what, uh, ins this is what inspired that gun was these, these Buck Jones specials. They're the only ones that I can find anyway that ever had that originally from Daisy back in the day. And this, uh, this uh, compass does work and it, it appears to be accurate. That way is north. Uh, very cool. So anyway, uh, I did a little bit of research on this thing and I've got some information. Um, it's nothing that you couldn't find yourself online, but uh, these were made, uh, the, the Buck Jones specials were made between 1934 and 1942, but they did have a variation before that uh, called the Buck Jones Jr. And that was only made one year in 1933, and those are exceptionally rare. But those did not have the sundial or the compass in the stock. And I think they were uh, a little bit shorter than, than these. There was two variations of the Buck Jones Special. And uh, I didn't find any timing that shows one was earlier than the other. But there was two different kinds of compasses. And uh, so the, the one they call Variation 2 just had a needle that would move in the compass and the back plane was fixed and then the uh, the one that we have here they call variation three but everything I've read online lists variation two and variation three as production between 1934 and 1942 <clears throat> but this one has a the, the dial let me see if I can get this the dial itself actually is sitting on a pin and moves yeah. but it does work it's actually pointing there it goes points north um, my house is basically set the face of it is to the uh, west the rear of it's to the east and each of the ends are north and south so um, and it's pointing north towards the north end of my house so that's pretty cool uh, I did uh, break out a couple of my Daisy Model 25s because they look very, very similar, but they're an absolutely, completely different design. And, uh, but uh, they're pretty much the same length. I mean, exactly the same length. The pump handle's in a different position. And uh, they, uh, they look very much alike, but uh, they function absolutely differently 
this uh, so let me show you the 25 first which is a much more familiar the, tw the model 25 was a very big success for Daisy obviously everybody has them um, they were made starting in 1912 or 1914 and uh, from what I read online the production in all their variations ran between 1914 and 1978 continuously then they were discontinued for a while and then they brought them back out again they have them out actually now you can buy a brand new model 25 but the model 25 has a tube you got to pull the tube out and fill the shot tube with bb's and uh and also when you cock it the uh arm comes down like that and it actually cocks the very much like a uh, lever from a uh, model or a red rider or one of the other lever action guns But uh, the model 20, that's the model 25. <clears throat> now the Buck Jones, and I don't have any BBs in this one yet, but we'll put some in there in a minute. But the Buck Jones, you still pull the handle back, but it just pulls straight back into the stock, and then you pull it out, and then you uh, fire it, and it goes. So I did do a little bit of work over the chronograph just to compare these two. And uh, the Model 25 is much more powerful. I don't know if it's just the difference in this particular one that I have here. I'm not going to mess with it. I, I did put some oil in it, and it actually came up quite a bit uh, from where it was. But it's working, and the owner doesn't want me to mess with it, so I'm not going to mess with it. So um, I was seeing uh, a maximum of around 207 with this. Put a picture of the... Uh, picture of the face of the chronograph right up here and uh, they were running it was running right around 200 207 was the maximum I, I I saw with this one with the uh, with the model 25 uh, I was seeing an average of around 287 uh, here's a picture of the <clears throat> chronograph with that but, so again the uh, the Buck Jones, very short period of time. I did a little bit of research, just I wondered who Buck, who Buck Jones was, and he was a big Western movie star. I've never seen one of his movies. Maybe I'll have to go and research, see if they've got any on, on uh, one of the streaming apps that I have. But uh, he was a big movie star in the 20s and 30s and uh, into the early 40s, but unfortunately he died in a fire. Uh, I read that it was at a party in his honor uh, and uh, the building burned down and killed just about everybody in the building. So uh, kind of a bummer of a deal. But uh, we'll go ahead and put some BBs in this guy. Um, I tried Daisy BBs. I tried uh, copper, uh, the Crossman Copperheads in there. And I tried the Hornaday uh, BBs. And it really did not seem to affect the f speed. Uh, in any great amount, maybe one or two feet per second at the most, but that's, I think, the variation of just the one shot to the next. So it really, uh, some BB guns, it really makes a big difference, and I don't know what the what the difference is, but sometimes these black ones are real fast in some BB guns, and sometimes the copperheads are more uh, are a lot faster. But uh, this, it's enough power to, to pierce a soda can, and that's what we're going to do with it. So let's take a few shots. We'll take a few shots with this, and I'll take a few shots with the uh, Model 25, and then we'll wrap it up. It truly is a, an honor to be able to have this in the garage here and just kind of showcase it. Play with it. Might be a... I have to do a head-to-head -head challenge with these two down the road. See which one can actually be more accurate. But for today, I just wanted to do a, a little history and a little plinking. Definitely is a minute of tin can. Oh, <laughs> knocked my uh, knocked my can down. Stand by. All right.
ready. We're back. Do a couple more shots with the Buck Jones, and then we'll do a, just a couple shots with the 25. So I actually do have uh, two 25s. They're both uh, they're both pretty much the same vintage. Um, the one I don't have loaded up right now, but this one is. This is actually the first one of the, the series I have got, and this particular um, variation is, was made between 1936 and 1952, and production did cease during World War II. That's why the Buck Jones actually stopped in 1942. <laughs> Much more power out of this guy. But uh, we're still cutting cans with the Buck Jones, so it don't matter. Power isn't everything with these guys. But uh, there you go. There is the the Buck Jones special. I just think it was. Uh, I've seen them online before, but I've never actually, like I said, I've never actually seen one in person. And uh, it was really kind of cool to be able to see this guy with the. Uh, the sundial and the in the working compass and the fact that the compass actually still works is, is pretty darn cool too it is actually a uh, pretty cool piece so i'm not sure if anybody's got any uh information as far as what the numbers should be as far as fps goes um if it's supposed to be a lot higher than that let me know I'll talk with the owner and see if he does want me to do anything as far as uh, trying to get it up to speed, so to speak. But uh, so far, I think we're just going to leave it alone and uh, let it be a nice old girl that got plenty of power to plink a can. So, but anyway, I hope you liked the video. It was a lot of fun doing it for you guys. Till next time, have a great day.